Welcome back to part two of using a table of common Taylor and Maclaurin series to determine additional power series. In the last video we looked at problems that just required substitution and also one that required a product of two power series. Now we'll take a look at one that requires a quotient of two power series. If we want to determine the power series for f of x equals tangent x, we can use the fact that tangent x is equal to sine x divided by cosine x. And since we have a power series for sine x and a power series for cosine x, we're going to take this power series and divide by this power series using long division. Let's go ahead and set this up. When I write this first several terms for the power series for sine x, I'm going to go ahead and evaluate these factorials. So we'll have x minus one-sixth x cubed plus one over one-twenty x to the fifth and so on. I'll do the same for the power series for cosine x. We'll have one minus one-half x squared plus one-twenty-fourth x to the fourth and so on. And now I'll perform long division to start finding the terms for the power series for f of x equals tangent x. So we have to ask ourselves what times one will give us this first term here which is x. And that would be x because x times one is equal to x. And then we have to multiply x by the rest of these terms. So we'll have minus one half x cubed plus one twenty fourth x to the fifth and so on. Remember when we perform long division we have to subtract this quantity here. And instead of subtracting we usually add the opposite. So we can change this to addition as long as we change all of the signs here. So we'll have negative one-sixth x cubed plus one-half x cubed and that's going to give us one-third x cubed. And then we'll have one over one hundred twenty x to the fifth minus one over twenty four x to the fifth and that's going to give us a negative one thirtieth x to the fifth. And now we ask that same question. What times one would give us one third x cubed? Well, of course that would be one third x cubed. Now we have to multiply one-third x cubed times these terms. So we'll have one-third x cubed, then negative one-half x squared times positive one-third x cubed. That's going to be negative one-sixth x to the fifth. And we'll go ahead and stop here, though we know it does continue on forever in both cases here. So now we'll subtract this quantity but instead of subtracting, we'll add the opposites. So this will be a plus, this will be a negative, this will be plus. So this is zero. And we have negative one-thirtieth x to the fifth plus one-sixth x to the fifth. That'll give us four-thirtieths or two-fifteenths x to the fifth. Let's go ahead and find the next term. What times one will give us two-fifteenths x to the fifth? Of course, that's two-fifteenths x to the fifth. We multiply by one. And we continue this process. So these terms will go on indefinitely, but this would be the power series for tangent x. So we can say tangent x is equal to x plus one-third x cubed plus two-fifteenths x to the fifth and so on. So if we needed more terms we would have to continue dividing here but I think you get the idea. One last thing to mention here, we did show on the last video that the interval of convergence for the power series for cosine x is from negative infinity to positive infinity and it's also true for f of x equals sine x. However, that's not true for tangent x. Remember tangent x has vertical asymptotes at negative pi over two and pi over two. So the interval of convergence for this power series 
would be the open interval from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Okay, that's going to do it for part 2 of this video. Next, we'll take a look at how we can use power series to integrate and differentiate. I hope you found this video helpful.